Over the last 20 years, Ultra Bridge have become famous for writing grand, ambitious songs on each record that stand out from all other tracks. These hallowed songs are known as Ultra Bridge's epics, and many of them are regarded to be some of the band's greatest works. But what sets these legendary tracks apart from the rest of Ultra Bridge's music? How are they structured to work as five, six, even seven plus minute songs? I'm gonna answer these questions as we discuss the music theory of an Ultra Bridge epic. In order to dissect Alter Bridge's epics, I first needed to determine which song should even be considered in the first place. In my mind, there's a difference between a song feeling epic versus being an epic, but the line between those two is not objective. One argument is that only songs over a certain length should qualify but then you risk excluding some songs because they're not long enough or including ones that really shouldn't be there. Another argument is that any song that feels epic should qualify, but then you run into the problem of including too many songs. It's kind of like what Syndrome says in The Incredibles. If every song is an epic, then none of them are. To make sure the list didn't become too long, I had to filter out a few tracks that were offered by my community that didn't quite meet the mark for me. And ultimately, I landed on this list of 14 songs. As you can see, there's at least one from each record, but since Ultra Bridge has become more experimental as time passes, this list is weighted towards records from the last 10 years. We'll be working with these songs for the duration of this video, but remember, this is mostly subjective. Alter Bridge has their own list of which songs qualify as epics, and I guarantee it's different than mine. So if you think I've missed an obvious one, let me know down in the comments. In my last semester in college, I took a theory class called Analysis of Popular Music. And one of our main exercises was transcribing songs to determine their structures and form. So to get started with such a complex topic, I decided to create form transcriptions of all 14 songs, which you can view for free using the link in the description below. During this process, I discovered some common threads across the songs, and that allowed me to break them up into three categories, standard epics, extended epics, and compound epics. The differences between these categories are subtle, so let's break it down. Standard epics are essentially our baseline. These songs fit the profile for a grand, powerful Ultra Bridge track, but there's nothing out of the ordinary in terms of their structure. They follow the typical rock form with little deviation, and they're on the shorter side of the spectrum. However, these songs are still lengthy and well-developed, with the shortest one on my list being just under five minutes long. Songs in this category include The End Is Here, Words Darker Than Their Wings, Dying Light, and The Other Side. Up next are the extended epics. These ones are similar to the standards, except they take more time developing some sections, especially the intro, bridge, or outro. But the most important distinction is that these sections still sound like the same song across the board. Once again, extended epics usually maintain a predictable structure, but with more development of their key themes in each section. Songs that fall under this umbrella include the iconic Blackbird, This Side of Fate, Burn It Down, and The Last Hero. And finally, compound epics are the most structurally complex songs from my list as they play fast and loose with the standard rock form. In the simplest of terms, compound epics are what you get when you smash several pieces of songs together. Oftentimes the parts are quite different from one another, but somehow the band finds a way to make them work together. Length is not as important of a factor here, but since a compound epic can have many different sections, they can also be very long, as is the case with one of Alter Bridge's latest editions, Fable of the Silent Sun, along with Pawns and Kings, Calm the Fire, Show Me a Leader, Cry of Achilles, and Fortress. So now that we've established the categories, let's make sure we're on the same page about song structure before we get too far into the weeds. Even if you've never studied popular music theory, you probably know the basics of song structure, since almost every popular song from the last 60 years follows one of these four patterns. The first one, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, is about as basic as it can get, and the next two are just slight variations of it. Alter Bridge heavily favors the second option, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, and they'll commonly add on some kind of intro and or outro. Every now and then, Alter Bridge will also use the third form and mix it in with the second, which often leads to some of their longer, more epic songs. For example, Last Man Standing off the newest record has a very noteworthy pre-chorus in addition to a bridge, 
though I don't consider this song to be an epic, so I won't be discussing it any further during this video. The final form, verse, verse, bridge, verse, is much less common in rock music, but still a popular form for many genres. As far as I know, there are no alter bridge songs with this structure, but that of course could change at any point. Going forward, you'll recognize that most of Alter Bridge's epics conform to one of these structures, but as we explore the spectrum of songs, you'll see how they increasingly push the bounds of standard rock form. Now, let's get into the analysis portion of this video, starting with the standards. As I said before, standard epics function as a starting point for our discussion since they adhere to the most common song structures for rock music. When you strip them down to their fundamentals, they've got the same layouts as simpler radio tracks like Metalingus, Rise Today, or Silver Tongue. Each song has a clear intro that directly leads into the music that follows, and while that part doesn't always return at a later point in the song, the intro is always connected to the rest of the song and serves as a foundation for the music to come. The outro for each song follows a similar pattern, continuing musical ideas established by a previous part of the song. Dying Light and Words Darker Than Their Wings have outros with solos atop chords inspired by their respective choruses. The latter song varies things by having a vocal solo instead of guitars, and Dying Light tacks on a coda following the interlude after the last chorus. The other side has a variation of the bridge for an outro, and in the case of The End Is Here, instead of developing the chorus, the band repeats the bridge almost note for note until the end of the song. Aside from the beginnings and endings of each song, standard epics have mostly the same form, following the tried and tested pattern of verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus. If you were to calculate the percentage of time in a song spent on these sections, they're all above 50%. Perform the same calculation for the amount of time spent on the bridge, and all five songs are under 25%. Of the standard epics, the other side is the closest to breaking this trend with a verse chorus ratio of 53% and a bridge ratio of 23%. But this song also has significant amounts of time dedicated to soundscapes and suspended notes during the intro and outro, which does affect the final results. Of course, this isn't to say that epics in other categories will automatically have less than 50% for a verse chorus ratio or more than 25% for a bridge ratio. In fact, Calm the Fire, a compound epic, has one of the highest verse chorus ratios at 71%, and the lowest bridge ratio at 8%. We'll discuss this song in more depth later on in the video, but these calculations just serve as a representation of my greater point, which is that standard epics all share similar song structures with little divergence from the norm. There are no radically different sections added to any of the songs, and everything just fits together as one cohesive track. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Everything I just said sounds like it could also apply to the next category, the extended epics. And if you're thinking that, you'd be correct. Extended epics share a lot of similarities with standards, except their length. Extended epics are exactly what they sound like. Songs that take the established verse chorus formula and go a step or two further to develop all of their sections. Not a single song here is under six minutes and their verse chorus ratios range from 78% all the way down to 43%. Take the legendary Blackbird as a prime example. When you look past all the flashy stuff with this track, it actually has a pretty basic familiar structure, cycling between verses, choruses, and instrumental interludes, which comprise about 50% of the track. What makes this an extended epic instead of a compound one is that all of these sections still fit within the overall structure and sound like the same song if you were to listen to them out of context. From start to finish, Blackbird's bridge is two minutes and 56 seconds, taking up 36% of the total song. But if you think about it, the bridge still feels like the same track, the same musical idea. It's got the same key, time signature and feel as every other part of the song. So it's got the same structural purpose as say the bridge in Come to Life or Wouldn't You Rather. When it comes down to it, Blackbird is just a really big rock song, but a damn great one at that. I doubt Alter Bridge has these categories in mind when they actually write these songs. Like they wake up one day and think, I wanna write an extended epic today that specifically adheres to the guidelines that Justin has laid out. They just write whatever sounds good and then we retroactively apply labels and categories to the songs to try and rationalize our opinions about them. That said, it's really fun to dissect Alter Bridge's music with you guys. So let's keep going with the third and most complicated category, the compound epic. 
So you remember all that stuff that I was talking about before with guidelines and structure and form and all that? Well, throw it out the window because compound epics don't adhere to any specific form. They can be whatever they want. A crazy long song with a massive guitar battle for the bridge, like with Fortress. A segmented track with many distinct and varied sections, like with Cry of Achilles or Pawns and Kings. Or Alter Bridge's longest song to date, Fable of the Silent Sun, which is two power ballads fused together with multiple time changes mixed in. Length is no longer a factor here as is the case with Calm the Fire. Like I said before, this song has one of the highest verse chorus ratios at 71%, but what makes it qualify as a compound epic is the disconnected introduction at the beginning. The same can be said for Show Me a Leader. In either song, not a single musical element from this section is repeated during the rest of the song, and it sounds drastically different than anything else that follows. Theoretically, you could just split the first minute and 18 seconds of either track into separate songs and it would work with no issues. In fact, doing that for either song wouldn't be half bad as an album introduction, kind of like with One Life from Walk the Sky. I wonder if the band considered that when they were writing the albums, especially with Fortress. Though you really can't beat Cry of Achilles as an album opener. This track also starts off with an independent once-off guitar riff and has multiple unique sections throughout the entire song. There are two different styles of verses in this track, as well as three different sections during the bridge. Plus, the outro has material inspired by the bridge as well as new parts, in addition to a killer guitar solo over top brand new accompaniment. All unique pieces that feel independent, yet somehow still work together as one track. This is the magic of Alter Bridge. They can mix parts together and combine Miles's and Mark's different writing styles to create something that is greater than the sum of their parts and better than we could have possibly imagined. One of the newest additions to the Compound Epics library, Fable of the Silent Sun, is the epitome of this concept. This song is literally two verse chorus groups and two bridges bound together into eight minutes of 22 seconds of pure unbridled power. The song goes through two full cycles cycles of verse and chorus built on melancholy finger picking and power chords. But then, after a long drawn out chord, the song suddenly takes a hard left turn into a new grinding riff, and it becomes rapidly clear that the track is only just beginning. We then experience two cycles of verse and chorus, all with brand new material. After the second chorus, we naturally move into the bridge, except this is one of the band's most experimental sections that jumps out immediately because of the time change. But when it ends, instead of going back to the chorus, we enter a new bridge section that sounds equally fresh and unique, during which Miles and Mark call back to their epic live guitar battles also referenced in Fortress. Now one might think after all of this, we'd finally return to the second chorus, but psych! Instead, Alter Bridge calls back to the first chorus, but at the tempo of the second. Only once this has finished do they inevitably recap the second chorus one last time, preceded by a dominating 60 second long outro. Whew, that was a lot. Compound epics are by far Alter Bridge's most structurally complex songs, playing fast and loose with the guidelines of typical rock music. I've even heard some people argue that songs like Fable are bordering on progressive rock, and it's honestly not that wild of an opinion. Prog rock is often described as having complex compositions along with grandiose lyrics, and Fable certainly has both. However, Fable does lack some other notable elements of prog rock, so personally, I don't consider it to be a full-on prog song, but it's probably the closest this band has ever gotten to the genre. So that is all three categories of epics broken down. If you have any video requests for individual tracks, let me know in the comments what I should talk about and why. For now, I'll leave you with a couple of fun facts. Across my list of 14 epics, there is a total of 211 sections, with a surprising majority of these sections lasting about 30 seconds long, despite a wide distribution of tempos across the songs. Songs in 4-4 tend to be around either 75 BPM or 120 BPM, and songs in 6-8 range from 150 BPM all the way up to 225, keeping in mind that the eighth note gets the beat in 6-8, not the quarter note. And speaking of time signatures, there's approximately a 70-30 split between 4-4 4 and 6 8 for time signatures used. 7 8 makes an appearance once during Fable of the Silent Sun, 
and is the only time mix meter is used throughout my entire list. And finally, if you want to listen to my selection of Alter Bridge epics in one sitting, I've compiled them into a Spotify playlist, which you can access using the link in the description below. All right, we made it to the end. That was a ton of numbers and calculations, so I hope everything made sense. If you're still watching to this point, I just want to say thank you. This video took a ton of work and research to put together, so I really do appreciate you sticking with it to the end. If you're still hungry for more Alter Bridge content, then look no further than this playlist where I reviewed literally every single album recorded by a member of Alter Bridge. That includes Tremonti, Slash, Projected, Miles' solo work, The Mayfield 4, Creed, and so many more. Go check it out, and I'll see you next time.